Hello friends, it's me, the Geek Von Doom, and today we're going to relax. This game is called Fishing Planet. It's a free-to-play fishing MMO. Now, I understand the oddity that is that sentence, but understand this. This is actually a relaxing game. I really enjoy it. This is actually the the uh the game that i used to to unwind after a stressful recording of scp containment breach or something along those lines or recompress after soma however it were but the people who made this game are very 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 smart not only should a simulator like a fishing simulator doesn't matter what kind of simulator it is really whether it be a uh Zombie simulator, a tractor simulator, a farming simulator, a survival simulator, or which is my favorite by the way, or anything else, what needs to go into a simulator is research. And this game has over 70 species of fish represented accurately in this game. For instance, I myself live in Texas. I grew up on a pond, and that pond had these following fish. We go over here to the Lone Star Lake. And let's see here. Let me read you off the checklist of my specific pond. Bluegill. Channel catfish. Whole shit ton of these guys. Uh, let's see here. No pickerel. No green sunfish either, but had a lot of red ear sunfish. Didn't have these guys. Uh, but spotted bass and uh, of course white crappie because waters in Texas and white crappie go hand in hand for those of you who like fishing this game is no substitute for getting out there and actually doing the do but what I'm going to make a suggestion is that you give this game a try and you got to be careful here because they start you out with a lot of money it makes you feel safe um, just going around spending it all willy-nilly, but I'm going to show you one surefire way to get a good start in this game. The first thing that you have to do, once you finish the tutorial and hit level 3, because that's when it all unlocks all the stuff that you need to start getting a good income in, is you go up here to the shop. And on the shop, you go to... Let's see, tools, equipment... Yeah, there we go. You go to spinning rods. And you should have this guy available. It'll be uh, the value spin six foot three inches. You go ahead and buy this. Then you head over here to lures. And you grab yourself a spoon. Specifically, the one that unlocks at third level, or the few that unlock at third level, are these guys right here. And you're going to want the last one. The casting spoon one six ounce number two hook okay, so you grab that guy as well let's see here let's make sure i've got everything all set up yep good looking good all right and you head over to the map now <clears throat> the next most important thing is you need to head over here to the to the licenses because you can't catch certain fish without a, without a a permit from the state that you're going to so, we go over here, and there will be a button right here that says, Buy Permit. We're going to go over here to the Licenses and Permits, or by License, I suppose. <clears throat> and go down to Texas. You go over here to the Texas, Advanced Texas License, yes, that's the one, which allows no restrictions either way, whereas the Basic License allows you to well, you have to release spotted bass red ear sunfish bluegill so on and so forth so you can get pretty much to all three of these spots and anywhere else on the lake or pond as it were that you needed to be uh let's see here except for right here i believe that's closed off maybe to right here ish i'm not exactly sure but we're gonna go, just for the sake of speed, we're gonna start right there. The other thing that you're gonna need to know every time you go out is the forecast. If you see this little sine wave looking dude right here, 
Um, the high points here are called peak hours. And you want to be in peak hours while you're catching these guys. There are other fish, I am told, that strike more during the valley hours than the peak hours. And other fish, for example, um, catfish are more active during the evening, so you'd be more likely to catch catfish on this side and then, uh, then in the morning here. But we're going to be right here. And it might, that that's just an example. I'm not actually 100% sure on that. I don't do much catfishing and nowhere near a an authority on the subject. I'm going to go ahead and go to a private room here and jump right in. So one thing to note is everybody has a favorite spot. And everybody has a favorite method of retrieval. And I'm no different. I have a favorite spot and a favorite method of retrieval. So we're going to be sticking it out right here. Uh, let's see, I'm going to turn down... There we go, and I'll do it right there. Now if you look at the bottom right of the screen, I have set up the reel speed and the line tension. For the equipment that I had shown you before, this would be what I use normally, is a resistance of four, those are the little things inside of the circle, and then in the center there you have your reel speed, which can be adjusted with your mouse wheel and whatnot. Or if you're using a controller, other means. So, let's see. A little bit out. Yep, right there. There it is. Lucky spot. We're gonna start this off by casting it out right about there. You see where that reflection is uh, indented? That's also my spot. Now, spotted bass aren't the fastest swimmers in real life, and the same holds true here. So I'm going to go, what I'm going to go ahead and do is retrieve it at the second speed, which with this reel and line, oh, well, maybe that was a bit strong. Let's try that again, shall we? Bring out the inventory. I totally got a bite though. Can't say I'm leading you astray. Let's see. So we are going to turn down the resistance by one. Four. I think I said four, not five, but I had five selected. So let's try this again. Same spot. Nope. All right, so like I was saying, bass aren't necessarily fast swimmers. So I've got there on the second speed, giving me a straight and slow which is a retrieval method that is both straight and slow. I bet you could figure that out to begin with, just based by the name, obviously. So we're going to bring this guy back in. We're going to give this a couple casts here, and we're going to see what we can catch. Ah, got one. So bass are also going to be your first real, well, I wouldn't say really big fight, but they are fighters. They're very active swimmers, so they do a lot of jumping too. Not the smartest move on their end. This one's kind of small, I can tell you already. Oh god, yeah, it's not even a pound. But on the other hand, this gives me a great opportunity to show you exactly how much they're worth, which is about $76 per pound. Go ahead and keep that guy. I don't think that there's any uniques or trophies in this uh, in this lake for spotted bass, but uh, actually I, I know there, well, I mean, there might be, but I'm just missing them, and I've been missing them for quite some time, who knows? But uh, there are other bass in other places that are other bigger, and uh, Sometimes a larger hook or better tackle is preferred, but as long as you're here, since Texas is free to come to, got another one. There we go. Come on now. Uh, since Texas is free to come to, if you're ever running low on money, this is a great place to come back and farm some bucks. Also fish. Bucks and fish. Oh, yeah, that one's a little bit better. That's yeah, exactly a pound. 
Come on, where are the big guys at? I think the max that I've seen on this lake are one, no, no, sorry, uh, two pound, 2.4 pounders. All right, so I came up empty again. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give this one more shot and then I'll show you a second method to do the same thing that other people use and um, have had a lot of luck with. Really, it, it goes on how, on how you prefer it. There's no, I mean, there is a right way and a wrong way, but I do not know which one is which. I have not seen a difference either way. There we go. Uh, this one's a bit bigger too. If you can see, it's actually lining me out, taking the line. Oh, it's really taking the line. This one's gonna be pretty decent, actually. I'm on now. Keep tension there. Another thing to note is uh, fish can snap a line or slip a hook if there is no tension on the line. So you've got to try to keep as much tension on the line. Well, you've got to keep some tension on the line at all times. Man, this guy just isn't coming in. With uh, later on in the game with better gear, it is uh, a lot easier to do this. Like on my uh, main account, yes, I have two accounts on this because I wanted to come back to basics for the YouTube video here. Um, I've got gear that can just flip them in like nobody's business, but come on. There we go. Get some more jump action going. Catch that air where you've got no traction. I'm going to reel you in. I'm talking to the fish. The digital fish. The fidgetal. Oop. Got some left. Yep, there we go. Come on now. Get some air there, pal. This is actually going to be a pretty decent sized one. It'll be great to end the video on. Ah! Down to 30 feet. Started at what, 90? Come on out. Oh, yeah. That's a big one. Come on now. 15 feet. <laughs> there it is. Hey, not bad. New personal record for this account. 1.858 pounds. Worth $143. Boom. So using this method, you'll be able to, f to fill up your keep net in no time. Let me know your techniques down in the comments below and what you'd like to see next. Not necessarily on this game, but if you wanted to watch more of this game, let me know down in the comments below and we'll uh, get another how-to going. And if you guys want to see another game on this channel, just let me know down in the comments of any video and I'll get right on it. Free shoutouts and uh, and kudos and all that for the people who suggest. Hopefully I get to your comment in time, and that will be amazing. But still questions remain. With over 70 species of fish, what's next on the list? What's the next best step after catching spotted bass? Find out the answers to that and more if we do another episode on Von Doom Gaming!